Have you ever wondered why there are no big cats in Australia? It's a fascinating question that prompts us to explore this peculiar phenomenon. We'll take a journey through history to understand how these magnificent cats evolved, where they came from, and where they live today. Furthermore, we'll consider whether it's possible for big cats to survive if they were introduced to Australia. By diving into this topic, we hope to uncover the reasons behind the absence of big cats in Australia and gain insights into the potential challenges they may face in adapting to the Australian environment. But first, what are considered big cats? There is some debate to which species belong to the Big Cat Club. Although there are 30 species of wild cats on the planet, some consider just four to be big cats and others consider as many as eight. Two characteristics that feature in four of the big cats include the ability to roar due to the structure of their vocal cords and hyoid bone and those that belong to the genus Panthera. Using these two determining features, the big cats include the lion, tiger, leopard, and jaguar. But other scientists also include the snow leopard, clouded leopard, mountain lion, and cheetah among the big cats. Either way, the largest of the big cats is the Siberian tiger. It can grow up to 10 feet long head to tail and can weigh up to 660 pounds or 300 kilograms. This is incredible when you consider the earliest feline in Earth's history wasn't much larger than our modern-day domestic cats. Tigers are located in the Russian Far East, through parts of North Korea, China, India, and Southeast Asia to the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Lions are found across sub-Saharan Africa with a small Asiatic population in India's Gir National Park, the leopard in sub-Saharan Africa, India, Southeast and East Asia, the jaguar in Central and South America. The earliest cat known to scientists was called Proilurus. It is thought to have appeared on Earth around 35 million years ago. It was a tree dweller, similar to today's civets and genets in appearance. Its fossils have been found throughout Germany, Spain, and Mongolia, with possible remains also found in North America. Its lineage would have diverged multiple times over the years to give rise to the cat species we know and love today. It is believed that the Panthera genus diverged from Phyllis 16.4 million years ago. This means that the earliest ancestors of today's tigers, lions, jaguars, and leopards emerged on Earth just over 16 million years ago. This was more than 80 million years after Australia split from the supercontinent Gondwana. Therein lies the answer as to why big cats are not found in Australia. They simply didn't exist at the time of Australia's separation from the rest of the world. Australia used to belong to the large subcontinent Gondwana. This included land masses that eventually separated and became South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and Australia. Complex life forms began to develop and evolve at this time. The Cambrian Explosion characterized by higher atmospheric oxygen and more nutrient-rich seas, resulted in the initial formation of all major animal phyla. Initially, animals could move freely across the great supercontinent Gondwana without physical barriers such as open oceans. But as the landmass began to break up, it became difficult for species to migrate. Fossilized remains of a cat called Panthera blithi have been found on the Tibetan Plateau. Although these cats aren't thought to be common ancestors of all pantherines, they do suggest an Asian origin for some of the big cats. From Central and Northern Asia, the big cat's ancestors are thought to have migrated across Europe and into North America. Australia had long since separated from the rest of the world when these ancestral felines were spreading and diversifying across the globe. As the big cats spread widely via land bridges and frozen seas, they had no way of reaching Australia's shores. As Australia separated from the rest of the world, it became more and more isolated, finally settling into its current position about 35 million years ago. The unique flora and fauna found throughout Australia are owed to this separation. Species were able to evolve and adapt on this continent without intrusion from other species that cross land bridges between continents and other parts of the world. Most of Australia's wildlife is endemic to the continent and not found anywhere else on Earth. No interchange of animals occurred elsewhere. There is an imaginary line called the Wallace Line. It is a zoological boundary. It separates Australia from Southeast Asia. 
Animals found to the west of the line are of Asian origin, and those to the east are Australian. Very few animals have crossed from Asia into Australia, despite the relatively short distance across open water. With few land predators affecting the ecosystems, Australia's herbivores have dominated the landscape. Dingoes were introduced to Australia between 5,000 and 10,000 years ago, relatively recently in evolutionary terms. They are the largest land predator found in Australia. In the case of marsupials, they are mostly found in Australia, with some in the surrounding islands and across the Americas. Marsupials also dominated South America at one time, before placental mammals from North America crossed the Panama Land Bridge into South America. As they did so, they decimated the marsupial populations. Australia's isolation allowed for its unique flora and fauna to develop without competition from an influx of non-native species. The niche of large carnivores was also occupied by marsupials. One notable example was the Thylacolio carnifex, which died out 46,000 years ago, reaching the size of a small lion. Thylacolio carnifex, also known as the marsupial lion, is an extinct species of carnivorous marsupial mammal that lived in Australia from the early to the late Pleistocene. Measurements taken from several specimens show they averaged 101 to 130 kilograms, or 223 to 287 pounds in weight. Although individuals as large as 124 to 160 kilograms, or 273 to 353 pounds might not have been uncommon. This would make it comparable to female lions and female tigers in general size. The animal was extremely robust, with powerfully built jaws and very strong forelimbs. It possessed retractable claws, a unique trait among marsupials. This would have allowed the claws to remain sharp by protecting them from being worn down on hard surfaces. The claws were well suited to securing prey and climbing trees. Australia's native wildlife would likely be severely impacted, if not destroyed by the introduction of large predators like the big cats. But could big cats survive in Australia if they were introduced there? Australia is so vast that within it are numerous habitats, climates, and ecosystems. While some may not be suitable for the big cats, others would provide the right kind of environment for some of them to live in. In the very north of Australia, savanna and rainforest is common, whilst in the center hot desert and semi-arid regions are dominant. A Mediterranean climate can be found in the south and southwest, with an oceanic and subtropical climate to the east and southeast. The big cats can survive in a huge range of habitats and climates. Siberian tigers can endure temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius, and African lions can live in regions where temperatures regularly exceed 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Although Australia's most central region would certainly be unsuitable for big cats, where rainfall can be as little as 3 inches per year, other areas could be considered suitable. The rainforest in northern Australia may be more than some of the big cats are used to, but there are regions where rainfall is similar to their native homelands. Furthermore, Asiatic lions and Siberian tigers prefer closed habitats. They live amongst the forests, where their ambush style of hunting is most beneficial. For these species, Australia's dense forested regions located in the far north, east, and southwestern, southeastern fringes would provide the right kind of habitat. These forested regions, including some of Australia's rainforests, would also be suitable for the leopard and clouded leopard. On the other hand, African lions and cheetahs prefer the open savannas where they can outrun their prey using their grip hunting strategy or agility to take them down. In this case, Australia's vast open grasslands, such as the northern savanna, which covers an area of 1.7 million kilometers, could be considered for lions and cheetahs. Thanks to Captain Cook, Several species of placental mammals, including ungulates, have been introduced to Australia during the 1700s. In fact, deer populations in Australia have exploded in recent years, causing problems for local wildlife and agriculture. If big cats were introduced to Australia, there would be plenty of introduced species they could survive on. They may also consider the likes of kangaroos, wallabies, and possums as prey. The snow leopard, given its typical mountainous habitat and cold weather adaptations, is the least likely to survive in Australia. But it seems that some of the big cats 
which includes such diverse species occupying many different niches and habitats, could survive there. However, the impact on the native flora and fauna would likely be catastrophic, as life in Australia has evolved without the presence of any large land predators over millions of years. There are three wildcat species found in Europe today. They are the European wildcat, which is an ancestor of domestic cats. The Eurasian lynx is found in North, Central, and Eastern Europe. And the Iberian lynx is found in Southwest Europe on the Iberian Peninsula between Spain and Portugal. The Scottish wildcat is a variation of the European wildcat. Lynx and wildcats are not considered big cats. But did big cats once roam Europe? And, if so, what happened to them? In the past, there were several big cats that called Europe their home. These were mostly during the Pliocene, Pleistocene, and early Holocene epochs. Most recently, the Caspian tiger lived in patchy distribution across Asia and into Eastern Europe. It is thought that some tigers survived in Turkey until as late as the 1990s. The Caspian tiger was hunted to extinction by humans. Their prey, mainly wild pigs, was also overhunted by people. The tigers themselves were killed for sport, and with massive increases in agricultural land, their population declined due to habitat loss. It is disputed whether they were actually in Europe, though, as the majority of turkeys lies within Asia. If we look further back in time, however, into Europe's ancient history, there were plenty of big cats roaming the countryside. During the Pleistocene, the European jaguar, cave lion, giant cheetah, Eurasian puma, and saber-toothed cats lived on the continent. In order to understand why there are now no big cats in Europe, we can find out what happened to the ones that were once there. Firstly, the European jaguar. This big cat is the earliest known species from the Panthera genus to have lived in Europe. It appeared in Eurasia not earlier than 2 million years ago. It was common in southern and western Europe, and later entered North America via Beringia. Until the Middle Pleistocene, these jaguars were the only big cats in Europe. They were larger than today's jaguars, and about the size of a small lion. This species was able to hunt a wide prey spectrum and take on larger animals than today's jaguars. They were well adapted to the changing environmental conditions of the Pleistocene. They seemed to cope during the repeated glacial-interglacial cycles. They became extinct between 350 and 300,000 years ago. The reason for its demise in Europe was the arrival of the Pleistocene cave lion. The extinction of the European jaguar was a gradual process. As the density and abundance of the cave lion increased, the jaguar retreated into smaller and smaller pockets of Europe. Their populations became more isolated, and they were eventually overwhelmed by the number of the cave lion. Secondly, the European cave lion. These lions were a subspecies of modern-day lions. They originated from Panthera leofossilis, and their fossils date back to the Pleistocene and even into the early Holocene. These lions originated in Africa and dispersed into Europe during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. They crossed into North America via the Bering Land Bridge and traveled as far south as Peru. Unlike today's African and Asian lions, these Ice Age lions were maneless. It is thought that these lions did not actually live in caves as their name suggests. The caves would have been home to cave bears, which used them to hibernate in and shelter with their cubs. The lions were more suited to coniferous forests and grasslands. They were about 10% larger than today's African lions and would have hunted medium and large herbivores such as deer, bison, and young mammoths. It is thought that the reduction in the amount of prey available may have led to their extinction. Scientists believe the cave lion became extinct from Europe at the end of the Pleistocene or early Holocene. Thirdly, the giant cheetah. Although today's cheetahs are almost exclusively found in African grasslands, they used to live in open forests across Eurasia. The giant European cheetah was morphologically like modern-day cheetahs, but weighed considerably more. This could have been a response to the colder climate. They still had slender bodies and long legs. They were built for speed and probably hunted prey in a similar way to cheetahs today. The giant cheetah was around in the late Pliocene, through the Pleistocene, and even into the early Holocene. The exact cause of their extinction is unknown. 
They may have been outcompeted by other big cats and carnivores, as well as struggled to adapt to a changing climate. Fourthly, the Eurasian puma. The Pliocene-Pleistocene puma also lived in Europe. It is thought to have been of a similar size to American mountain lions. Fossils from this species, puma pardoids, have been found throughout Europe. The terrain and land cover of these areas were diverse during the last ice age. This suggests that this puma occupied a range of habitats from forests to grasslands. These pumas were present in Europe from the Pleo-Pleistocene transition and lived for more than 2 million years. The high ecology adaptability of this species allowed this cat to find its place in the complex web of the early Pleistocene carnivores. The arrival of the equally adaptable leopard is thought to have outcompeted the Eurasian puma by the end of the early Pleistocene. Finally, the saber-toothed cat. These cats also lived in Europe and were also known as homotherium or scimitar-toothed cat. They weighed up to 420 pounds and were a similar size to African lions. They lived in Europe until 28,000 years ago. It is likely their extinction was also part of the mass extinction of megafauna during the Ice Age. Woolly mammoths, giant cave bears, and saber-toothed cats became extinct towards the end of the last Ice Age. It is thought that this mass extinction was due to a mix of both environmental changes and competition with the early man who was spreading throughout Europe and the Americas during this time. It is also thought that Homotherium's low genetic diversity led to the cat's demise. If a species has lower variability in its genes, that makes it more vulnerable to environmental change. As a species, it is less able to overcome significant changes to its environment and habitat. Many animals that roamed the globe during the Pleistocene have since become extinct or had their ranges severely restricted. Mass migrations within the Pleistocene epoch were partly due to climate change. Some African species dispersed northwards when forests gave way to savanna and arid conditions reduced prey availability for some of the top predators. In North America, the extinction of a large number of apex predators and their prey happened at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary. It is not certain why these animals became extinct, but it is thought that early human settlers were not entirely, if at all, to blame. In Europe, it seems that a mixture of changing climate and interspecies competition led to the demise of Europe's big cats. The puma, together with the giant cheetah, was one of the top predators in Europe. Later on, the pantherine cats joined these predators, dominating Europe's ecosystems for hundreds of thousands of years. Some of these big cats became extinct when lions and leopards spread widely into Europe. The end of the last ice age dramatically altered Europe's landscape. It has often been assumed that southern Europe provided pockets of refugia where some species, including early man, survived the harshest of the glacial periods. As the Earth moved into the Holocene, global temperatures warmed, and those in southern Europe were able to move northwards into the unpopulated territory. Of course, populations had traveled northwards before, during the Pleistocene, but the Holocene migrations were more permanent when the climate became warmer. Paleontologists don't yet have all the answers, but with each new fossil discovered, another piece of the puzzle is completed. Although changing climates and environmental conditions that caused mass extinctions were a natural occurrence, maybe we could learn a thing or two from the not-so-distant past. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time, time.